And that's the turn of uh, Nicole uh, Ortega, who is a contemporary artist, teacher, and art therapist in Switzerland. And uh, she has a well, she has a PhD candidate at the Zen Noruka Planetary College. Okay, um, I'm not going to talk about education, but as a student, uh, a third researcher, a learner in the education system. I, my research project started this April, so I'm six months into my project now. I'm exploring what visual artworks, two-dimensional, I mean uh, painting, drawing, video, and photography, and what the art make, art make experience communicates of body consciousness, and how neuroscientific findings about body self-consciousness can be of relevance for the making of self-portraits, especially when drawing, painting, we're talking the whole body. Persistent questions. That feeling of being in, owning your own body is a fundamental human experience and is tightly linked to our subjective, first person perspective of the world. We only have our view of the world. I can even see my hand, I can't see behind me. But where does, where does this originate? How does it, and how does it come to be? Is this a relevance to artists and painters? How do painters make self-portraits and why? What is special about self-portraiture in the past and today? We still do it. Today's contemporary self-portraiture likes to extend itself. It, it fictionizes itself to transpose an, an autobiographical relation and at the same time it points to challenges and displays it questions the artist's awareness of external perspectives on themselves. For example, I'm not just the person who's creating the work, I'm also the critic of my artwork as well as the viewer and the, and the commentary and the creator is almost like a self-industry. Uh, um, the virtual self is increasingly being engaged. One can see that. I'm just trying to say something in 15 minutes. Another part of my research, which I'm not going to go into right now, but I just touched on to it, is what are the perceptual mechanisms in art? If you see, in order to acquire knowledge about this world, how can this be influenced, studied, by presenting specific art and specific artworks to subjects using, subjects I mean test people, using insights from the field of left and right hemisphere specialization. Some background. Drawing with the other hand, for example, is a managed loss of control which in a way is related to neuroscientific experiments that I have seen and experienced as a test person at the Lab of Cognitive Neuroscience at the ETH in Lausanne. I was there for nine months as an artist in lab. In healthy subject testing, the scientists manipulate our sense of reality, fear, our self relocated in space, for example. It is not a it's a manipulated uh, stripping of the senses to find out uh, what we need, what we don't need to, to behave in space. And, and do we still have our first person perspective? It's not the loss of control, which often is the case in patients, for example, people with brain damage, which causes specific hallucinations, which are a kind of self portraiture that means that uh, in their mind, um, pictures are being generated, are being painted by the brain, for example, um, autoscopic hallucination. That means seeing your body without a mirror. So you hear this person, the patient, she drew how she saw herself. She saw herself here. 
she could still feel herself here, but she saw a double. Uh, a a two-dimensional double opposite her. An hallucination. Um, what well, can goes for to have an out-of-body experience? That is a hallucinated self-portrait from a different uh, self-location and perspective. So um, the patient is often lying or sitting there and sees himself or herself two meters away, usually facing um, see outside um, his own body, looking down on his real body. So his uh, first-person perspective has shifted to a, a third-person perspective, and the location is 